did they get to you this time? Should they come all back? I mean, I just don't understand. Bonjour, Adam. What are you fussing over this time? Shouldn't you be Ella? After all, this week's episode is on the exquisite, mysterious, and très belle Audrey Tattoo. Now I understand. Buff, have you been behind all of this? Did you take my dad's garden gnomes and put them on trips across the world? We've been receiving photos like these of them in front of famous monuments for months now. My dad is this close to snapping. You've got a lot of explaining to do, buddy. Well, someone has to get ready and excited about this week's French celebrity. And you know, Emily is one of my all-time faves. Bonjour and bienvenue à Ors du Cadre. Aujourd'hui, nous allons parler d'une magnifique actrice en nom de... Wait a sec. Just wait a second. Adam, what are you doing? I understand that we're covering the lovely French actress Audrey Tattoo. But there's no need to host our show in French. Oh, you know, Buff, I just thought it'd be a perfect occasion to practice my French. You know, it's not very good, so... And what did you call out of frame? Your translation is way off. Oh, don't worry about it, Buff, never mind. As I was saying, Audrey Justine Tautou was born on August 9th, 1976, in the small volcanic town of Beaumont. She grew up in mont luçon in central France. Her father was a dental surgeon and her mother a teacher. From an early age, Tautou was fascinated with acting, so she began taking acting lessons at the famous Cour Florent, one of France's most prestigious drama schools. You know, Adam, I also took acting lessons as a child. That's why I'm not camera shy and ready to take over as an out-of-frame host anytime. Like right now, if you feel tired. After all, my Francais is super bon. Non, pas. In 1998, Tattoo participated in a talent search contest sponsored by the French TV channel Canal Plus. It was called Jeune Premier, the young debut, and Tattoo won Best Young Actress at the 9th Bézier Festival of Young Actors. They better have recognized her talent and skills. She's phenomenal. That's not all, Buff. In 1999, Tony Marshall gave her a role in the César award-winning movie called Venus Beauty Institute, where Tattoo won three awards, one for Best Actress and two for Most Promising Actress. And then in 2000, she won La Prix Suzanne Bianchetti, a distinguished prize recognizing Tattoo as France's most promising young film actress. Zutalo, Adam. Let's get to the best part. I want to hear about her movie credits. Sacre bleu, Buff. Be patient. Quoi? I mean, what? Listen, I'm getting to it. Jeez, Buff, you're unusually impatient and bratty today. What's, uh, what's going on? I'm just on amour with Audrey. I would be her boyfriend in une seconde. Okay, let's move on, because I'm getting peculiar looks from the crew, especially our director. But everything changed in 2001. Tattoo was put on the map and rose to international fame for her enchanting performance as the quirky lead in the romantic comedy Amélie, a film directed and written by Jean-Pierre Junet and co-written by Guillaume Laurent. Although Junet originally wrote the script for an English actress, Emily Watson, due to scheduling conflicts and Watson's poor French, Junet rewrote the script for Tattoo after seeing her in a poster for her previous movie, Venus Beauty Institute. It took only one audition for Junet to be convinced that he had found his Amélie. The plot revolves around an introverted and eccentric French girl who one day decides to improve the lives of those around her while struggling to find love and happiness of her own. The purity and tenderness that is Amélie has won viewers of all ages around the world. It was met with critical acclaim and was a huge box office smash success. And awards for Amélie are numerous. In total, it won 54 awards and was nominated for 56. This includes winning two BAFTA awards, including Best Original Screenplay, and being nominated for five Academy Awards. 
Earning over $33 million in theatrical releases, it is still to this day the highest grossing French language film released in the United States. That is fabulous. I remember watching the film a couple of years ago. I loved it then and I still love it now. So do I, Buff. It sure is a classic, but hold on, there's more to say. Did you know that Tattoo was actually unable to skip stones in the water, so they had to use special effects in all of the stone skipping scenes in Amélie? And, and, the idea for the traveling gnome was actually inspired by a series of pranks in the 90s where over 150 gnomes were stolen and set on crazy escapades. And did you know that- Uh, Adam, you're gonna have to move on. The director looks hungry and is motioning for you to wrap it up. Well, I think it's safe to say that following Amélie, Tattoo had no trouble snatching movie roles. In 2002, she appeared in her first English-speaking role in the British thriller Dirty Pretty Things, directed by Stephen Frears. The movie centers on two illegal immigrants in London who uncover a terrible underground operation. The film was well-received and won 19 awards. It was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay in 2003. After Emily, it's hard to picture Tattoo in a drama thriller. Oh, don't you worry about that, Buff. Throughout her career, Tattoo played in lots of romantic comedies. Tattoo certainly gravitates towards rom-coms. She was once quoted as saying that she enjoys making sensitive, clever, and subtle movies. Her 2004 romantic film, A Very Long Engagement, is a great example of that, and it reunited her with her Amélie director, Jean-Pierre Jeunet. Gotta love those romantic films. Aw, Buff, you're, you're just a big softie at heart, aren't you? Anyway, it was in 2005 that Audrey had her first taste of a major American blockbuster, Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code, starring Tom Hanks and directed by Ron Howard. From the get-go, Howard wanted Audrey to play the role of Sophie, but she hesitated since she felt like she was a little too young for the role. Following some convincing on Howard's part, Audrey did audition and immediately got the part. During her audition, Tattoo asked to take a picture of both Tom Hanks and Ron Howard to prove that she had actually met them. Ah, that shows that she's really down to earth. I love her. Following The Da Vinci Code, Tattoo continued her steady flow of making one to two movies per year. But we couldn't conclude today's episode without mentioning the lead role that Audrey played in the biopic of fashion designer Coco Chanel, titled Coco of All Chanel. In an interview, Tattoo shared that she relates to the late fashion designer because just like Coco Chanel, she also craves independence and freedom. Perhaps that goes with Audrey's enigma, for she is a very private person and the media in general knows very little about her private life. But that's part of her charm. I love that she's not splattered on every cover of every gossip magazine, like some stars who shall remain nameless. <coughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> It isn't surprising that following Coco Avant Chanel, Audrey was the face for Chanel's iconic perfume, Chanel No. 5, in 2009. Nor is it surprising that she's considered a fashionista and a style icon. Uh, I didn't even know that. Buff, you know uh, quite a bit about the subject. Are you a closet fashion gossip expert? Well, that just goes with my many talents, Adam. Always so humble. Well, that's a wrap for today, mes amis. But before we bid farewell, how about a trivia question? Name one of the countries where the gnome travels to in the movie Amélie. Let us know your answers in the comments below or tweet your answers to at Out of Frame TV. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm your co-host, Buff. And we'll see you next week when I give you a close-up on the brilliant Baron of Blood, David Cronenberg. Au revoir.